Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and this is the 2022 CanJam New York Preview. CanJam New York takes place February 26th and 27th at the New York Marriott Marquis Hotel in Times Square. It's been two years since the last CanJam New York in February 2020, quite literally just before the world changed in ways most of us probably could never have imagined. We've missed you all a great deal, and we can't wait to see you again in New York. As I've said before, New York is where this all started. While HeadFi the website launched in 2001, the event that started what eventually became CanJam first happened in New York back in 2006, co-organized by members of the New York HeadFi community and Tile Hertzens of Headroom and Interfidelity fame. It was called the National HeadFi Meet. Because of this history, CanJam New York is always a sort of homecoming. This year's CanJam New York would not be possible without our CanJam New York sponsors, so we'd like to thank Headphones.com, Cardis Audio, Headphone Guru, Secrets of Home Theater and High Fidelity, and CoBuzz. CoBuzz is also the official CanJam music streaming partner. Now, let's jump right into the preview with just a sampling of the tremendous lineup that you'll be experiencing firsthand at CanJam New York, February 26th and 27th. Odyssey will be joining us once again this year, and they're bringing an incredible lineup of headphones to audition at the show. Back in September at CanJam SoCal, the Odyssey LCD5 and Carbon were two of the headphones near the top of everyone's lists, and that's likely to be true at CanJam New York this year. The LCD5 is the first all-new flagship LCD over-ear design to come from Odyssey in five years, and boy was it worth the wait. It is, without question, one of the most electrostatic-sounding non-electrostatic headphones we've ever heard here at HeadFi HQ. Compared to the LCD4 that came before it, the LCD5 takes a more neutral approach in its presentation, coming out a bit leaner than its older sibling. Where the LCD4's upper frequencies are detailed but with a sense of smoothness to them, the LCD5 is a bit brighter, a bit more revealing. This shift brings the LCD5 more in line with my preferences, while Jude has mentioned that there have been times where he's preferred the LCD4's tonal balance. So, if you're like me and prefer a bit more speed, transparency, and resolution from the LCD4, you absolutely must give the LCD5 a listen at Odyssey's exhibit. The other co-flagship, launched around the same time as the LCD5, made considerable waves throughout the community when it was unveiled late last year. This was, of course, Odyssey's first ever electrostatic headphone, the Odyssey Carbon. Now, if you haven't already seen our interview with Odyssey CEO Shankar Thiagasamadram from the Carbon's launch, we'll link it in the CanJam thread and in the description below. Without question, the Odyssey Carbon's greatest strength lies in its sheer resolving capability. To my ears, it easily goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other top contenders in the electrostatic category. The Carbon is quick, decisive, and highly resolving, and yet to my ears it manages to avoid crossing the line into becoming shrill and piercing. I think Odyssey has done a spectacular job capturing the magic of what makes electrostatic headphones special while keeping the all-too-common shortcomings reined in. It doesn't matter if you're a lifelong electrostatic fan or if you've never heard one before, the Odyssey Carbon must be heard to be believed. One of the new products that'll be at CanJam New York 2022 that I've been most excited about is this little gem. This is the new Cord Electronics Mojo 2, and it's the successor to the immensely popular Cord Mojo that was released around seven years ago, I think back in 2015, and I can't believe seven years have already gone by. Now what Cord has packed into the Mojo 2, the improvements and features versus the first generation Mojo, constitutes a significantly long list of stuff, and some of these new features and improvements are for me, and probably will be for a lot of you, very significant. Let's start with some of the overall improvements with the Mojo 2. There have been many improvements with the Mojo 2's DAC, 40,960 taps now, 40 DSP cores, and a 104-bit custom DSP core, among other improvements. They've also eliminated coupling capacitors, which they say contributed to greater neutrality with the Mojo 2, and that's one of the first things I noticed about the Mojo 2. To my ears, it is definitely more neutral and more resolving than the first-generation Mojo, which I found to be comparatively smoother, maybe even warmer. Something else Cord Electronics added with the Mojo 2 is something I am super pumped about, and that's an extremely useful digital EQ or tone control thanks to the new DSP. There are four bands of adjustment, lower bass centered at 20 hertz, mid bass with 125 hertz shelf, lower treble with a 3 kilohertz shelf, and high treble centered at 20 kilohertz. For each of the four bands, adjustments can be made in one decibel steps up and down for a total of 18 decibels of adjustment range per band. It's awesome. I use it and I love it. This is a huge deal to me. The Mojo 2 also adds three different types of crossfeed and I'm a crossfeed fan and have been for years so this is a big deal for me too. 
The Mojo 2 outputs 90 milliwatts into 300 ohms, 5.2 volts RMS, and 600 milliwatts into 30 ohms, 4.2 volts RMS. Thankfully, with my most sensitive IEMs, the Mojo 2 has been dead quiet in terms of self-noise. Also, the Mojo 2 is compatible with the Cord Poly streamer server if you want to take it wireless. Now there's more to talk about and I wish I had more time to do that now, but it's best if you just go listen to the new Cord Electronics Mojo 2 for yourself at Cord's exhibit. Of course, Cord will also have the rest of their lineup there and their desktop DACs are still my absolute reference DACs and have been for years. It's time to ramp up your audio education at CanJam because at CanJam New York this year, there are a total of eight seminar sessions over the two days and none of them are repeated. Also, seating is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly so that you don't miss the seminars you want to see. The seminars will take place in the Palace and Winter Garden rooms, directly adjacent to the Broadway Ballroom. On Saturday, February 26th, from 11 a.m. to noon, join Everett Mance, the community manager at Grell Audio, for Headphones 101. Simple in theory, headphones can be complicated electroacoustic devices. Get a clear overview of various driver designs and learn about basic acoustics, frequency response, impedance, sensitivity, and more. Most importantly, discover how to choose the headphone that best suits your needs. If you didn't get enough in Headphones 101, take the next class, Headphones 201, on Saturday from noon till 1 p.m. In this session, we'll explore more advanced acoustical concepts, including pinna interaction, individual ear geometries, and acoustic impedances, all of which can contribute to both perceived and actual differences in what you hear. Your instructor, the legendary headphone designer, founder, and CEO of Grell Audio, Axel Grell. Join Justin Weber, founder and lead engineer and designer at Amps and Sound, on Saturday, February 26th, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. for Amplification 101. Which amp will best drive your headphones of choice? Should you opt for tubes or solid state? Learn the basics of amplification, including gain, topology, and classification, as well as understand how power output, voltage, current, output impedance, damping factor, and distortion will factor into your decisions. What can an amp specs tell you about its performance? Find out in Amplification 101. Digital Audio 101 is taking place on Saturday, February 26th, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. with Centrance's founder, lead engineer, and designer, Michael Goodman. Join Michael for a clear and concise introduction to digital audio, as well as the DACs needed to enjoy it. Learn all about various DAC topologies, clocks, filters, jitter, ringing, whether DAC chips really do have a house sound, and much more, so that you can evaluate which DAC might be best for you. Closing out Saturday's seminars from 4 to 5 p.m. is Streaming 101 with Cobas USA's VP of Business Development and Chief High-Res Music Evangelist, David Solomon. Streaming is arguably the most convenient method of audio delivery today. Learn about various streaming services and their features such as music selection, audio quality, artist payout, and more. Then discover which streaming configuration is best for your needs. And what about Rune? Get all of your streaming questions answered here. Kicking off Sunday's discussions is Measurements 101 from noon to 1 p.m. with Dan Clark, founder and lead engineer and designer at Dan Clark Audio. Gain foundational knowledge in how to read and interpret headphone measurements and learn what measurements can and what they cannot. Tell us about how headphones will sound. If your purchasing decisions are based upon measurements either in whole or in part, this may be the most important seminar you'll attend all weekend. Remember, Measurements 101 is taking place Sunday, February 27th from noon till 1 p.m. Seven years after the debut of its predecessor, Cord's long-awaited Mojo 2 portable DAC amp is finally here. Join Rob Watts of Cord Electronics on Sunday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. for a recounting of its development over the years and a comprehensive overview of the Mojo 2's groundbreaking features, including UHD DSP, enhanced menu options featuring an additional control for crossfeed, mute, and lock settings, intelligent FPGA battery-based management and charging, and of course, more taps. On Sunday, February 27th, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., join Audio Precision's Dan Foley for a special presentation entitled Modern Measurement Techniques for Headphones, DACs, and Related Audio Devices. With many of today's audio products incorporating non-linear signal processing, such as noise-canceling headphones or voice processing devices, sine wave-based testing methods either don't work or yield incorrect test results, especially when characterizing distortion. This seminar will focus on test techniques that incorporate test signals and analysis methods using speech and music-like signals, as well as actual speech and music. This seminar is intended for anyone involved in product design or are interested in learning more about how today's audio products should be tested to better characterize audio quality. Again, all eight seminars will take place in the Palace and Winter Garden rooms directly adjacent to the Broadway Ballroom. 
Seating is limited, and each session happens only once, so plan your schedule accordingly. Hi-Fi Man is going to be at CanJam New York, and they're expanding on their product offerings that use their Himalaya R2R DAC technology. Hi-Fi Man launched their Himalaya R2R DAC architecture last year, after many years of development. In last year's CanJam SoCal video, I briefly discussed this new DAC technology from Hi-Fi Man, but here's a very quick summary. Virtually all of the DACs we use today are a type called Delta Sigma, which long ago pretty much replaced R2R type DACs. Now, if you don't know what R2R or Delta Sigma DACs are, you're going to have to Google both as we don't have time to dive into those topics in this preview video. I will say, though, that R2R DAC enthusiasts are often passionate about them, strongly preferring the character, the sound of R2R DACs. Now, some of the best DACs I've heard have indeed been of the R2R type. At CanJam New York, Hi-Fi Man will be unveiling their new EF400 desktop R2R DAC combo. This pre-production EF400 arrived just days ago, and I've been having a wonderful time listening to it with a variety of headphones. The EF400's DAC section is based on the Himalaya R2R DAC architecture, and it lets you quickly switch between non-oversampling and oversampling modes, and also low and high gain modes. The amplifier section is a fully balanced, fully differential circuit. I believe maximum output is up to 4.4 watts per channel with up to 10.7 volts RMS into 36 ohms with less than 1% THD at that level. So far, I've mostly been using the EF400 to drive the flagship planar Hi-Fi Man Suzvara, easily one of the best non-electrostatic headphones ever made. And the EF400 drives the Suzvara beautifully. I've also been using the EF400 with the new, very reasonably priced Hi-Fi Man Edition XS planar magnetic headphone. I also used it with a couple of my favorite IEMs in low gain mode, and it worked to treat with those too. The EF400 is a beautiful sounding R2R DAC combo, and I believe it's going to be quite affordably priced. Getting back to the new Hi-Fi Man Edition XS headphone, you absolutely can't miss listening to it at Hi-Fi Man's exhibit, not only if you're looking for a more affordable headphone, but even if you're shopping with a big budget. The Hi-Fi Man Edition XS improves on the original Edition X with Hi-Fi Man's new stealth magnet technology, as well as Hi-Fi Man's Neo Super Nano Diaphragm, which is 75% thinner than previous designs. Hi-Fi Man is one of the companies always pushing the performance envelope at affordable price points, and the Edition XS is an absolute giant for its price to my ears. Also on the more affordable side, make sure to listen to Hi-Fi Man's Deva Pro. You can listen to it wired, but the Deva Pro also comes with a Blue Mini R2R Bluetooth DAC dongle that supports Aptex HD and LDAC. I've been using it with a Huawei P30 Pro using high-res LDAC, and it sounds superb, with a wonderfully detailed and full-bodied sound signature that appeals to my tastes very much. Anyway, make sure to stop at Hi-Fi Man's exhibit at CanJam to listen to their entire lineup, as they bring such strong performance at almost every price level, whether you're on a strict budget or have an immensely stout wallet, and for every budget in between. If you've been in the market for a new headphone cable, then Cardis Audio will have a fun and interactive exhibit for you at CanJam New York. They'll have a very capable desktop rig featuring gear from Air Acoustics and Woo Audio, serving up high-res tracks for you while you audition and compare headphone cables from their Clear, Clear Light, and Parsec lines. They'll have a few headphones on hand, but they invite you to bring your own headphones for a personalized experience using gear that you, obviously, already know well. When you're done with that, and especially if you're new to the hobby, be sure to give their ear speaker IEMs an audition while you're there. First developed over a decade ago, Cardus ear speakers feature custom dynamic drivers that were designed to mimic the tympanic and cochlear characteristics of the human hearing system. It is this ear mirror technology that has earned Cardus ear speakers a reputation for effortless detail and musicality, while significantly reducing listening fatigue. So if you've sworn off in-ear monitors in the past due to that stuffy closed-in feeling, or ear fatigue, or even physical discomfort, then give Cardus's ear speakers a listen to see if they change anything for you. Abyss Headphones recently released their newest headphone, the Diana TC, and you'll be able to hear the Diana TC driven by Woo Audio's phenomenal amplifiers at Woo Audio's exhibit at CanJam New York. For me, the new Abyss Diana TC is the best overall headphone Abyss has yet made. Whereas the previous Diana models were always approaching the performance of Abyss's respective AB1266 platform models, the Diana TC carves out a place of its own at or near the top of the line in my opinion. To be clear, the new Diana TC has benefited from the low-mass diaphragm technology brought over from the AB1266 Phi TC. This diaphragm is lower mass than in any previous Diana models, with lower mass base material as well as a reduction in the mass of the conductive traces. 
And while the Diana TC does carry over the Diana magnet assembly, Abyss Headphones has better optimized the conductive trace pattern to the magnetic field, increasing the driven area. Another change Abyss has made with the Diana TC versus previous Dianas was to increase the open area on the machined sides to optimize acoustic impedance for the driver at any volume, and it's more open back than it was before. One of the most obvious changes was to the ear pads. In addition to bringing the ear pad manufacturing in-house and so having greater quality control and consistency, the ear pads are a completely new design. They're made of a new soft foam internal structure and a pillow top to better adapt to the shape of your head. The new lambskin ear pad covering has a very supple hand and is now unperforated. These ear pads bring an even more conventional fit to the Diana platform, and that means an easier, more consistent seal than before. With these, I simply get a more dependable seal over my ears, and definitely more so than with the previous generations of Diana ear pads. All of these changes, all of this evolution, places the Diana TC squarely as a peer of its larger flagship AB1266 Phi TC sibling. Truth be told, I prefer it to the AB1266 Phi TC. The Diana TC is extremely resolving, extremely resolving, almost ruthlessly so, and I mean that in the best way possible. The bass is taut, fast, and extended, certainly a refinement of any Dianas before it, and among my favorite bass presentations of the non-bass emphasized flagship headphones on the market, it's extremely linear down low. The mid-range and treble are also more polished, the Diana TC just overall being more together, more coherent than maybe any Abyss headphones before it. The Abyss Diana TC is definitely one of my very strongest recommendations to audition at the show. Again, the Diana TC and the rest of the Abyss lineup will be available to listen to at the Woo Audio exhibit at CanJam. I should also mention that Woo Audio has been teasing this image on social media, clearly a hint at something new from Woo Audio that'll be unveiled at CanJam New York, so I can't wait to find out what that is. I actually have no idea what that is. And we also just found out that Woo Audio will have the new Stax flagship SRX 9000 electrostatic headphone at their exhibit to listen to, and Headamp will also have the SRX 9000 to listen to at the Headamp exhibit. If you're a New York area head fire, you no doubt know the name Bloom Audio, and they'll be joining us at CanJam again this year, bringing with them a veritable treasure trove of new and exciting gear. Their lineup includes recent releases like the Astell & Kern Acro CA-1000, the Campfire Audio Sabre, and the Meza Audio Lyric and Elite, among others, but there are two specific items that I'm looking forward to trying most at their exhibit, one portable, one not. I've been eyeing iFi Audio's XDSD Griffin for some time now, but I haven't yet had the chance to try it for myself, and it will be my first stop at Bloom Audio's exhibit. The XDSD Griffin is a portable all-in-one device with both wired and wireless connectivity. You'll find balanced and single-ended headphone outputs that support up to 1000 milliwatts on the front, and dual USB-C at the rear for charging and digital inputs. The Griffin supports PCM up to 768, DSD up to 512, DXD up to 768, and if you require support for MQA playback, you'll find that here too. Wireless connections are handled by a Bluetooth 5.1 link with support for many wireless codecs, including Aptex HD, LDAC, and HWA. With all of this packed into a compact, portable device, it's likely to make a wonderful traveling companion for the flight back home. At the other end of the spectrum is a device that isn't as travel-friendly as the XDSD Griffin, but is just as fascinating, and that's the Questyle Audio CMA15 Desktop DAC Amp. The CMA15 represents 15 years of Questyle's current mode amplification technology, and the name celebrates just that. If you're not familiar with Questyle's approach to amplification, their amplifiers use current rather than voltage to amplify the signal, and in my experience, this approach worked well in their previous generation products, like the Questyle CMA800 desktop amplifier and the Questyle QP1R digital audio player. I'm excited to experience Questyle's current mode amplification technology once again in the CMA15. The CMA15 supports PCM up to 768, DSD up to 512, and MQA where needed. It offers almost every input that you can need, with USB-B, USB-C, optical, coax, Bluetooth, and analog connections. As far as outputs, you're well covered there too, with dual 3-pin XLR and single-ended RCAs on the rear, and balanced 4-pin XLR, balanced 4.4mm, and single-ended 6.35mm headphone connections on the front. Bloom Audio will certainly be a can't miss at CanJam New York, so join me in trying the XDSD Griffin, CMA15, and more at their exhibit. 
I know I've mentioned this before, but since it's still true, I'll say it again. The two best built, most finely crafted headphones I've ever used are by Meza Audio, the Meza Audio Empyrean and the Elite. They're the most meticulously constructed headphones at any price in my opinion. Thankfully, Meza backs up the finish and build quality with sound quality, and they've done it again with their latest headphone, which you really need to listen to at CanJam. This is the Meza Audio Lyric, and it's Meza's latest headphone, a new flagship class closed back headphone using the planar magnetic driver design they pioneered with Renaro Isodynamics for their open back flagships, but optimized and adapted for use in a more compact closed back design. For those of you not familiar with Meza and Renaro's planar magnetic drivers, they use a trace design, a coil design, that is entirely unique to Meza Audio and Renaro Isodynamics. It's made up of a dual coil array designed for frequency targeting different areas of the ear, which Meza claims improves acoustical perception, particularly in the upper frequency range. Simply put, one of the trace patterns is optimized for lower frequencies and the other for middle to high frequencies. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for the Lyric, they adapted their driver design not just for closed back use, but also to be more compact. This is important as a closed back design opens up more use cases, and particularly for on the go use. Now, as much as I love the Empyrean and Elite, I wouldn't want to have to carry around a headphone the size of those. They're both very large, wide headphones. The Lyric is much more compact, but it's still very comfortable. It's as compact as I could reasonably expect a full sized circumoral headphone to be. It also comes with a nice, relatively compact carrying case, easily fitting in my backpack. As far as the Lyric's design goes, even though Meza has gone with a different style with the Lyric, it's still meticulously built, opulent, and beautiful. The chassis is made mostly of magnesium, covered with a gorgeous, gloss matte spattered black finish. They also make extensive use of aluminum with copper accents, and the ear cups are covered in soft leather. It's a stunning headphone to look at and to feel, and again, it's very comfortable on my head and over my ears. As far as the Lyric's sound goes, Meza Audio gave it a tuning that's a bit of a departure from their flagship open back headphones. It has rich refined bass, but with more low end emphasis than with their open backs. But it still leaves the mid range free of bloat or excess. The Lyric's full low end reminds me of some of my other favorite high end dynamic close backs, yet it's free breathing mid range and sometimes brighter treble combined with that low end potency sometimes reminds me of one of my favorite electrostatic headphones. The Lyric has become a regular companion, and I have no issues driving it with my favorite portable players. Anyway, the Meza Audio Lyric is a must-hear headphone at CanJam. And don't forget to also listen to their flagship open back, Meza Audio Elite, which was one of the biggest hits at CanJam SoCal last year. Dan Clark Audio is one of the companies that have become a staple at CanJam events, and they'll be bringing their new Stealth to CanJam New York this year. We sat down with the founder, lead engineer, and designer Dan Clark last fall to discuss the Stealth's development and its all-new design, so be sure to check that out before you stop by their exhibit. The Stealth is the first headphone to feature Dan Clark Audio's Acoustic Metamaterial Tuning System, or AMTS. The AMTS is a small inline device that sits between the transducer and your ear, and with it, Dan and his team can shape a headphone's frequency response to hit their ideal targets. Again, if you haven't checked out our interview with Dan, I highly recommend doing so, because Dan goes in-depth into how the AMTS helped achieve their goals for the Stealth. The Stealth is one of those rare headphones that's closed but sounds open. There's a sense of air and spaciousness that helps me forget I'm listening to a closed back, and that's perfect for evenings when I don't want to disturb my neighbors, or, more importantly, when I don't want my neighbor's one-year-old to disturb me. The Stealth has a smooth, natural signature that I think will gel well with many listeners, so while you're at Dan Clark Audio's exhibit, be sure to try it for yourself. Now, it's easy to get wrapped up in and be drawn to the new hotness, but there's another headphone at Dan Clark Audio's exhibit that I think is a must hear, and that's the Dan Clark Audio Ether 2. The Ether 2 is an open back, flagship class planar magnetic headphone, first introduced back in 2018. At its launch, the Ether 2 featured an all new planar magnetic driver with a diaphragm 70% lighter than its predecessor and an ultra light metal and carbon housing. The result was a warm sound with excellent detail retrieval and a quick, tight low end, all packed into a headphone weighing only 290 grams. The Ether 2 is one of the most comfortable planar magnetic headphones I've personally experienced, and I recommend experiencing it for yourself while you're there. Dan Clark Audio will be exhibiting in the main Broadway ballroom at CanJam New York this year, but you will also find them in the Schubert Room. Head to our private listening rooms along the side corridors to audition open cans, like the Ether 2 and Voce Electrostatic Headphones, in a more secluded listening environment. 
DCS will be at Can Jam New York, and they'll have their DCS Bar Talk DAC and headphone amplifier at the show in an exhibit room with a quieter listening environment. The DCS Bar Talk has been one of the digital reference DAC amps here at HeadFi HQ and is now the DAC reference for HeadFi and CanJam staffer Ethan, who goes by Third Eye on the forums. Veteran audiophiles among you are probably very familiar with DCS, or at the very least know that DCS has been making top-notch audio gear for decades. DCS is most known for their proprietary ring DAC technology. As a much, much younger audiophile, after reading about DCS's ring DAC technology and all the positive reviews, and after listening to their gear at shows, I dreamed of owning DCS gear, and I even bought an RCAM CD player that used an IC version of DCS's technology. While it wasn't fully-fledged DCS, I was over the moon just to own a taste of it. The DCS Bartok is a full DCS ring DAC through and through, and it can be had with a custom-designed DCS headphone amplifier built in with very low output impedance and up to 1.4 watts of output into 33 ohms and 150 milliwatts into 300 ohms. It also has switchable crossfeed, which means a lot to me as I use crossfeed when needed and that's somewhat regularly. The Bartox Ring DAC is not based on a standard DAC chip, but is instead a fully bespoke digital signal processing engine designed by and unique to DCS. An entirely tailor-made solution running code written and regularly refined by DCS's engineers, all of whom impressed me a great deal when we visited DCS's headquarters in the UK a couple of years ago. One of the claims DCS makes about their Ring DAC architecture is superior linearity. So I did a linearity measurement of the Bartok on our Audio Precision APX 555 audio analyzer. And as you can see, the Bartok was essentially perfectly linear all the way down to the very lowest level of my test at minus 120 dBFS. Using Audio Precision's JTest jitter measurement utility, the Bartok turned in one of the lowest jitter measurements I've seen on that test. Again, at CanJam New York, DCS will have a quieter listening environment in which to experience the superb DCS bar talk, so make sure to stop by the DCS exhibit room. I am just thrilled to see DCS bringing their decades of know-how to the world of HeadFi. At CanJam New York 2022, Centrance will be featuring several pieces of stunningly powerful kit, beginning with their DACport HD, a USB-C Dongle DAC amp featuring now unobtainium AKM silicon an exceptionally powerful Class A amplification outputting as much as 775 milliwatts. So capable is the DATPort HD that Headfire Osprey Andy calls it an endgame dongle, placing at the top of his list of well over 100 dongles. Centrance will also be bringing their Hi-Fi Mate V2, a Swiss Army knife of a portable DAC amp outputting as much as 1.6 watts and featuring USB and Bluetooth inputs, multiple signal ended outputs, multiple balanced outputs, multiple gain settings, multiple power settings, a bass boost, a treble boost, and more. At CanJam SoCal last fall, Headfire Royce Tricker was wowed with the Hi-Fi Mate V2, calling it a clown car of a portable DAC amp. As for every feature he discovered about it, he was shown two more. But making his show debut at CanJam New York 2022 is the final production version of Centrance's new Ampersand portable headphone amplifier. Whereas the prototype unit shown at CanJam SoCal last fall matched that of 4 watts of output power, this production version can output up to 6 watts or 3 watts per channel, which allows it to drive some of the most demanding headphones available today, like Head Audio's headphone. Employing the world's first full range AMT or Air Motion transformer driver, the headphone is well known for its astounding speed and detail, world class transparency, and studio quality neutrality all at a price that defies current flagship trends. However, as many of you know, the headphone demands ample amplification, like that of the ampersand, in order for us to fully realize all of its sonic benefits. So why have I been going on and on about the headphone all of a sudden? Because we've just learned, in a last minute surprise update, that Head Audio would be joining us at CanJam New York 2022. They'll be co-exhibiting with Centrance, and we'll be able to audition the amazing synergy offered by the combined efforts of these two pro audio brands. Attention electrostatic headphone enthusiasts, this preview segment is especially for you. At CanJam New York, you'll definitely want to stop at the Exonic exhibit. Exonic is a new company making its debut with the launch of high-end electrostatic amplifiers. While a new company, Exonic has veteran roots. If you've been a part of the New York HeadFi community, then you probably already know Kerry Gerontianos. He's known simply by his given name, Kerry, which is also his forum name, and I've known him for years as a member of this community. 
and many electrostatic headphone enthusiasts already know Kerry from his Kerry built T2 amplifiers. For those of you not familiar with the T2, here's a little background. The Stax SRM T2 is a very legendary, very extreme electrostatic headphone amplifier that was originally developed in 1994 by Dr. Takeshi Hayashi for Stax. To say the original T2 is rare is an understatement. I've never listened to the original model, but I got to see one when I visited Stax's headquarters in Japan a few years ago. In 2009, the T2 was brought to the DIY community by Kevin Gilmore with the support of Spritzer, now of Mjolnir Audio, and the DIY community. The carry built version was first developed in 2016 and has been met by the community with great enthusiasm. Carry's Exonic T2 is as close as most of us will ever get to hearing Dr. Hayashi's legendary amp. Carry and his new company, Exonic, will have a commission build carry built T2 at CanJam to listen to. The carry built version is a miniaturization of the DIY T2 build using mostly surface mount device or SMD technology and many modernized parts. Exonic does retain some of the original transistors that made the T2 sound so legendary. The Exonic carry built T2 is definitely a must listen, and especially if you're already an electrostatic enthusiast who's dreamed of hearing the T2. At CanJam, Exonic will also be showing another amp, a new design called the Exonic Eros. The Eros was designed to capture the spirit and most of the defining sound qualities of the T2 amplifier in a small and more economical amplifier. For example, whereas the Carry Built T2 weighs around 45 pounds, the Eros weighs only 12 pounds. Now, I've only seen photos so far, and these amps look beautifully built. I've known Carry for years through the community and can't wait to hear both of these Exonic amps as I'm very much an electrostatic headphone enthusiast. Any year will be joining us again this year, and they're bringing back an old friend with a new twist. Back in 2019, In-Ear was showing this, the In-Ear Profile 8 Universal Fit IEM. The Profile 8 features a four-way, eight-balanced armature driver design. There are two switches located on the inside of the Profile 8's housing that can be used to adjust its default signature. The first switch boosts the low end by 3 dB, and the second boosts frequencies above 8 kHz by 2 dB. If you find yourself wanting more slam or a bit more detail up top, making these adjustments is a snap. Inear describes the Profile 8 as a studio reference tuning, and I think that's an apt description. I tend to find myself favoring more neutral, more referency signatures, and the Profile 8 falls squarely within my wheelhouse. However, there are times when I'm in the mood for something a bit more fun, and after a quick adjustment, the Profile 8 answers that call wonderfully with a modified signature that I'd call audiophile fun. At this year's Can Jam, Inear will be unveiling a custom version of the Profile 8, and this has me excited for several reasons. This is the same Profile 8 that many head fires have come to know and love in a personalized fit. Inear says that the Profile 8's sound signature has been fully preserved in the custom version, completely unchanged from its universal sibling, but with the improved comfort and seal that comes with the custom housing. In addition to the custom fit, there are three faceplate options available to make the Profile 8 custom your own. One solid matte black, one matte black with a laser engraved in-ear logo, and one with the in-ear logo inlaid with real gold, handmade by in-ear's in-house goldsmith. In-ear sent the gold version for photographs, and honestly, I'm not sure if my photographs do it justice. So check it out in person at their exhibit. In-ear will be launching the Profile 8 custom globally during Can Jam New York weekend, but attendees at the show will be able to enter a raffle to win a laser engraved Profile 8 custom for themselves. Stop by in-ear's exhibit to find out how to enter, and while you're there, be sure to audition the Profile 8 alongside the rest of In-Ear's lineup. Axel Grell is a legendary headphone engineer whom many of you know from his years at Sennheiser. Axel was one of the key figures behind so many headphones this community holds in the highest regard, including the Sennheiser HD600, HD650, HD800, HD800S, the Sennheiser HE1, which I think is the best sounding headphone ever made, and many more. Now, when I started measuring headphones, Axel Grell was actually one of the first people I contacted, and he's been one of my mentors along the way. Now, a few years ago, Axel left Sennheiser and started his own company to do product engineering, design, and consulting, which has been keeping him insanely busy, but also to design and build his own products under his company name and brand, Grell Audio, and Grell Audio will be at CanJam New York. The first product that Grell Audio introduced is this. This is the Grell Audio TWS-1 in-ear headphone. And actually, there are two versions of this, the Grell Audio TWS-1 and a collaboration version that Grell Audio announced with Drop.com called the Drop Plus Grell TWS-1X. And that's the version I have here in front of me. And I think Grell Audio will have both versions at the show. I think the main differences between the two are colorway, packaging, and accessories. 
In my experience, audiophile sound quality in a true wireless form factor is not yet common. The Grell Audio TWS-1 is one of the few true wireless choices I've used that I think meets the standard. The TWS-1 uses custom 10.1mm dynamic drivers in a closed-back earphone design. It supports SBC, AAC, Aptex, Aptex Adaptive, and LHDC. The TWS-1 also has a transparency mode, which I find an absolute must for a closed earphone that I'd use while out and about. And it has ANC, or active noise cancellation, and something very clever that Axel Grell developed called NAR, which is Axel Grell Noise Annoyance Reduction. Noise Annoyance Reduction scans the noise spectrum and adjusts the ANC, keeping psychoacoustic considerations in mind. In terms of sound, the Grell Audio TWS-1's default signature is what I'd call a bass-emphasized on-the-go audiophile-friendly signature, especially in consideration of its true wireless form factor. The TWS-1 has strong low-frequency extension, clean mid-band, and crisp treble. I think it's a very good default signature for head fires to use when they're out and about. But the TWS-1 also supports sound personalization using an app called Sound ID. Now, the only unit I have here is an earlier TWS-1 prototype that does not yet work with Sound ID, but the production TWS-1 does support this, and you'll be able to use it at CanJam, so make sure to stop by their exhibit to hear the TWS-1 and to meet industry legend Axel Grell. It's always exciting when an exhibitor joins us for their first CanJam, and this year's CanJam New York marks Linsoul's first appearance. Linsoul will no doubt have a loaded exhibit at the show, and you'll want to stop by and check out new gear from brands like Fearless Audio, TFC, Shanling, and more. One of the brands you'll be able to experience at Linsoul is the company behind this little guy right here. If you've been around the forums for a while, then you've no doubt come across the name The Audio, and at CanJam New York this year, Linsoul will be showing The Audio's new flagship, the Monarch Mark II. Like the original Monarch before it, the Monarch Mark II is a 9-driver tribrid design with one dynamic driver, six balanced armature drivers, and two of Sonyan's electrostatic tweeters. With the Mark II, the audio says their goal was to improve upon the original Monarch's technical performance and introduce a more balanced tuning, while staying true to the original Monarch spirit. In their pursuit of this goal, the Monarch Mark II underwent several changes. The audio has replaced the original 10mm dynamic driver with a brand new composite diaphragm driver, reconfigured the balanced armature drivers, and incorporated the latest electrostatic drivers to achieve what they're calling balanced perfection. I haven't had the chance to experience the original Monarch to draw comparisons, but describing the Mark II as balanced is no undersell. To my ears, it's an easygoing sound conveying a smooth, even presentation that excels for relaxed, easy listening. The low end is forward, yet well controlled, mids are clear and textured, and the EST drivers are tuned for an effortless yet detailed treble response. This is the kind of IEM that I can listen to comfortably for hours without fatigue. The Monarch Mark II comes with a braided two-pin cable with three swappable terminations, 2.5mm balanced, 3.5mm unbalanced, and 4.4mm balanced. It also comes with a convenient carrying case. So, if you're looking for an IEM with a low end that's north of neutral, clear mids, and a smooth, detailed treble, make sure the Theodio Monarch Mark II is on your audition list when visiting Linsoul's exhibit. I've said it many times before, and I can't imagine I'll stop saying it anytime soon. I'm an unrepentant, unblushing tube audio enthusiast. The very best hi-fi systems I've ever heard have pretty much all had tubes somewhere in the chain, whether those systems were driving loudspeakers or, of course, headphones. Now, this behemoth of an amp, the Ampson Sound Nautilus, was a big, heavy star at CanJam SoCal last year. That was also the first time I'd heard the Nautilus, and I loved it. It's a beast of an amp. The Nautilus allows for a range of tubes, including 6L6GC through KT90s. I believe it comes with a matched pair of 6L6GC STR or KT88s. This one here has KT88s. It also has a single 12AX7 and two 5AR4 or 5U4 rectifiers. When choosing which headphone to start off with with a tube amp, I usually start with a high impedance headphone, so I started with the Sennheiser HD800S. Into 300 ohms, the Nautilus can output up to 6 watts. Now with the HD800S, I was only a couple of clicks into the 24-step stepped attenuator before I was at a moderate listening level, and the HD800S might never have sounded so rich and full as it did from the Nautilus. It was with the Hi-Fi Man HE6SE and Susvara that I was most impressed, though. Into both of those planar magnetic headphones, I think maximum output from the Nautilus will be around 5 to 6 watts, so these sometimes challenging to drive headphones are driven with outright ease and driven beautifully by the Nautilus. Now, I've always found the HE6 variants challenging mates for amplifier pairings, but the Nautilus reminded me why a properly driven HE6 is still held in such high regard by HE6 diehards. 
but the Suzvara with the Nautilus has to be one of the best sounding non-electrostatic headphone systems I've heard in some time. It's incredible. The Nautilus seems to bring out all the Suzvara's strengths, namely electrostatic rivaling resolution, coupled with the fleshy three-dimensional sonic image objects fantastic tube gear can bring into systems. The Amps and Sound Nautilus is also very flexible, allowing for five separate impedances to be selected for system matching and a pair of 8-ohm 5-way binding posts. Cinemag transformers are used as input transformers for XLR to RCA conversion, and the input uses input transformers for reduced noise floor, greater clarity, and sub-bass response. Also critical to the Nautilus's performance are custom-wound ultra-high-quality output transformers from Transcendar. The Nautilus's component list reads very impressively, just a fantastic amp. Amps and Sound will also have a new amp at the show called the Red October. The Red October is a true dual mono amp with up to 7 watts output using 12AX7, two 300Bs, and two 5U4 or 5AR4 rectifiers. I love a good 300B amp, so I will definitely be giving the new Amps and Sound Red October a listen at CanJam 2. Dunu, one of my favorite IAM brands for well over a decade, will once again be joining us at CanJam New York 2022. They'll be bringing their entire line of acoustically excellent in-ear monitors, including their Zen Pro, Falcon Pro, EST-112, Studio SA-6, and their new Titan S. Like many of you, I haven't heard the Titan S yet, but with so many head fires describing it as balanced and natural, with plenty of air up top, at a price point of only $80, I'm definitely curious about it. Having said that, the Dunu model I am most excited about is their mysterious new Vulcan a hybrid design featuring four balanced armature drivers supported by two dynamic drivers, it's supposedly engineered for exceptional sub-bass response. Has Dunu hit the mark with the Vulcan? Let's find out! Dunu is actually bringing their Vulcan prototype and offering special preview auditions exclusively to CanJam New York 2022 attendees. So join me in being amongst the first head fires to hear the new Dunu Vulcan. Music Tech is joining us at CanJam New York again this year, and before you sit down at their exhibit, be prepared to get lost in their broad selection of gear. It almost seems like they're bringing their entire catalog, including gear from Kayan, Dita, Oriolus, Shanling, Soft Ears, and so many more. Aroma Audio is one of the brands you'll find at Music Tech's exhibit, and the Aroma Audio Jewel is an in-ear that recently took me by surprise. The Jewel is a hybrid IEM featuring one dynamic, six balanced armatures, and six electrostatic drivers per side. The result is a sound that I believe will appeal to lovers of resolution and detail. The 9.2mm dynamic driver is well controlled for a low end with solid impact and quick decay. The balanced armatures bring a nicely textured and detailed mid-range, and the electrostatic drivers push out clear forward highs. This is not an IEM I'd recommend to lovers of thick, lush, smooth signatures, but if you're like me with an affinity for speed and resolution, then the jewel should be your first stop at Music Tech's exhibit. Another piece that caught my ear is this, the QDC Anoli V14. The V14 is a fun, engaging IEM with four tuning switches to adjust its default signature. With all switches off, the V14 offers a fun sound with an emphasized low end and excellent mid-range detail. Where QDC's previous flagship, the Anoli VX, was more balanced and even across the range, the V14 comes across as the more energetic and playful sibling. Ethan, our CanJam producer who goes by third eye on the forums, Ethan has spent ample time with QDC's Anoli V14 and calls it a boosted and supercharged VX, and I can certainly see why. See why for yourself at Music Tech's exhibit. Now, if you're the type who loves a signature with a prominent body, solid heft, and considerable impact, then the unique melody Mest Indigo might be right up your alley. The Indigo's driver complement consists of one dynamic driver, four balanced armature drivers, four electrostatic drivers, and Unique Melody's DBCS bone conduction system. This system vibrates the inner areas of the Mest Indigo's housing to physically transmit specific frequency ranges to the listener. To my ears, the Indigo's bass slams hard yet accurately with layers of detail that run all the way up through the mid-range, and the electrostatic drivers finish it off with a clear, smoothly polished treble. Personally, I like a bit more sparkle in the treble region, but admittedly, I'm more often than not the odd man out in that area, and I think the Indigo could serve as an excellent companion for many head fires. Only 200 sets of the Indigo were produced, so CanJam New York may be your last chance to audition it. These IEMs are only a small selection of what you'll find at Music Tech's exhibit, so be sure to visit their booth and audition the Jewel, V14, Mest Indigo, and so much more. 
Again, Can Jam New York is happening February 26th and 27th at the New York Marriott Marquis Hotel in Times Square. On your screen now is a list of all the exhibitors and brands at Can Jam New York this year. Again, we've missed you all so very much, and we can't wait to see you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in New York and on the forums at headfi.org.